We've looked at fluid statics to figure out what the pressure is at different locations. And one of the big reasons we're interested in knowing what the pressure is, is so that we can know what the forces are that are acting on things that are surrounding the fluid. Now, if we know the pressure at this location, we also know that pressure acts normal to a surface and it acts on the surface. So if I had a pressure acting on this surface, it would be pushing in that direction with a pressure P. The resulting force would depend on the size of the area that it was pushing on. So if I look at just a little small area there, dA, then this will be the pressure times dA. So pressure times area gives me a force. And finally, if I want to get the direction correct, then I'll need a vector that accounts for the direction of the surface. And the usual way we define that with surfaces is with a unit normal vector that points outwards from the surface. So this n vector is a unit normal, that means it's one unit in magnitude, and it is at a right angle to the surface. And we can define that unit normal vector for every surface as pointing outwards from the surface. In that case, the force from the pressure is going to be negative, it's in the opposite direction of that unit normal pointing outwards from the surface, negative n times the pressure times the small amount of area that it's acting over. Now if I want to get the total force over the entire area, then I'm going to have to integrate over this whole surface s, and I'll get that the total vector force is equal to the integral it's a double integral because it's over area, over the surface S, the whole surface that I'm interested in, of the pressure times the incremental area, that's the magnitude of the force, and the normal vector is going to be involved, and this normal vector may change if this area isn't perfectly flat, so we need to make sure we keep that normal vector inside the integral signs, and there's a negative coming from this reversal of direction. This is just a sign convention that says this unit normal always points outwards, so the pressure force is always pointing in the opposite direction. So this is how we could get the total vector force acting on the surface. Or, if we were interested only in components of that force, we could make our lives a little simpler by not worrying so much about the vector stuff. We could say that the force component in the x direction will still have the integral over the surface area and will take the pressure and will multiply it by the area projected in the x direction. So that f of x is the x component of the force and a of x is the projected area in the x direction. Now, if we're going to take that approach, we need to be careful to look after that sign there and make sure that we get our projected area pointed in the direction that, uh, that we're interested in so that we get this integral right. But it's going to get a lot simpler if we've got simpler situations than an arbitrary surface. But let's look at how we can break this down. If I had a sloping surface like this with a pressure acting on it like that, it's going to be exactly like this one up here. I'll have a normal vector outwards. I've got the pressure acting in the opposite direction. I can break that down into two parts, an x and a y component, with one of them being pressure times the area projected in the x direction, and the other one being pressure times the area projected in the y direction, where those are each projected areas of dA. I can look at it this way, or I can look at it this way. I can say that that's going to be equal to the component of the pressure force over the entire area. So I could take P in the x direction over the entire area, plus P in the y direction, the component of P in the y direction over the entire area. And that would give me the same thing. I'm taking the component either of the area projection or I'm projecting the pressure, but not projected pressure times the projected area. 
because that way I would be taking the projection twice, I'd get my geometry wrong. So the simplest way to manage this is look at it in this sense. I've got this area. I can consider it as made up of two projected areas, one in the x direction and one in the y direction. I will have the pressure force acting over each of these projected areas. And I can integrate those separately to get me the components fx or similarly to get me the fy component.